how did you even become a sleep doctor? And is it worth doing sleep fellowship? I get this question from time to time from colleagues. So let's talk about it. I'm Dr. Nishi Bhopal. I am a physician. I'm board certified in psychiatry and sleep medicine, and I practice through an integrative holistic lens. And this channel is all about clinical sleep education for physicians and therapists. So I got interested in sleep during my residency training. When I went into residency, I didn't actually know that sleep medicine was a fellowship that you could do. And I'm aging myself here. So this was over 10 years ago and sleep medicine wasn't really as popular as it is now. But I had always struggled with sleep personally since childhood. When I was a kid and adolescent, I was always sleepier than my peers and I felt like I just couldn't get a handle on my sleep issues. I was always like fatigued and I really struggled during med school and residency. So I had this personal interest in sleep and one of my senior residents, when I started my residency, I actually started doing my residency in internal medicine. So I matched into IM and one of my IM senior residents was actually going into a sleep medicine fellowship. And I was like, what is that? You can study that. I ended up switching into a psychiatry residency after my IM intern year because I realized that IM wasn't quite for me, but I was really interested in psychiatry and mental health. And it was always one of the specialties that I was interested in when I was in med school. I just ended up choosing IM for the match. So I switched into psychiatry and then I also started to see how much sleep was impacting the patients that we were working with. There's such a strong relationship between mental health and sleep issues. So that further sparked my interest in sleep. I started doing rotations with the sleep center. As it turned out, Henry Ford Hospital has quite a robust and well-known sleep clinic with some very famous names that, that do research out of there. I started doing some rotations with them and just found the topic so fascinating. And I got to learn so much more about how to support our patients with sleep. And at the same time, I saw that there was a gap in our sleep education during residency. Even when I was doing my IM internship, we learned a little bit about obesity, hypoventilation, and sleep apnea, but really not a whole lot about managing other sleep issues. I decided as a psychiatry resident that I wanted to apply for a sleep medicine fellowship, and so I started working on my applications for that. And I remember distinctly one of my psychiatry attendings, when they asked me what I was planning to do after graduation, I told them I wanted to do sleep. And he said to me, why would you want to do that? Our job is to help people wake up, not to put them to sleep. And I thought, oh my goodness, isn't it obvious that if we can help people get better sleep, help them to be more rested, they're going to be more awake and alert during the day and more functional in their lives. To me, that was such an obvious connection, but I guess it wasn't to others. And this interest in sleep that there is now, there's all these influencers and people talking about sleep online. That just wasn't the case back then. People still had that old fashioned idea of I'll sleep when I'm dead or there's no time for sleep. Sleep. So I'm glad to see that the tides are turning now. However, even still, sleep education is really limited in medical training. Studies have shown that in the U.S., most students get only about two hours of sleep education during medical school, and these statistics are similar worldwide. Some programs, some med schools don't even teach sleep medicine at all, which is astounding because everybody needs to sleep. Every doctor is working with patients who need to sleep. After my psychiatry residency, I went on to do a sleep fellowship, a sleep medicine fellowship is one year after your residency. And I did my fellowship at Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center in Boston. And one of the things that really attracted me to sleep was the interdisciplinary nature of it. You can do a sleep fellowship after a variety of different specialty trainings. So you can do it after a neuro residency, psychiatry, of course, you can do it after internal medicine or lots of people who do a fellowship in pulmonary critical care go into sleep as well. Pediatrics, neurology, family medicine, ENT, and anesthesiology, all of these specialties can go on to do a sleep medicine fellowship. And in Indeed, in my fellowship program, it was really multidisciplinary. So there was three of us fellows in my year. There was me from psychiatry. We had a pulmonary critical care doc and then a neurologist. And then we also worked alongside the pediatric sleep medicine fellowship. So there was a child psychiatrist and a pediatrician doing the child sleep fellowships. Then after fellowship, you can practice in multiple different ways. A lot of docs will go on to practice in a sleep clinic or maybe in a hospital-based sleep lab and sleep clinic. You can also have a side gig doing interpretation of sleep studies. So that's actually what I do. I have a private practice. It's called Pacific Integrative Psychiatry. And so my practice is actually focused on psychiatry and mental health through an integrative lens. But we also support patients with integrative and holistic approaches to optimize their sleep. And one of the things I do on the side is interpreting sleep studies for a sleep clinic. Other docs might go on to do research or work in academia. There's also a scope for working in public health, especially since the CDC has declared that insufficient sleep 
is actually a public health epidemic because one in three adults in the U.S. is not getting sufficient sleep. Then, of course, with medicine, we are so well positioned to go into entrepreneurship. So that's something that I do as well. In addition to my private practice, which is an entrepreneurial venture, I also am in the online education space and I do a lot of education and speaking just like on this YouTube channel. I have courses for clinicians where I teach them integrative sleep medicine. So there's lots of different avenues for you to explore, whether you go into sleep fellowship or if you want to incorporate sleep into your practice in other ways. If information like this is helpful for you and if you want to learn more about clinical sleep medicine, go ahead and grab my free sleep mini course. It's called Sleep Medicine Pearls for Outpatient Physicians and it's jam-packed with lots of clinical pearls that you can use in your practice with your patients today. We'll put the link on the screen here. You can get it at intrabalance.com forward slash doctors and then I'll put the link in the video description below. Now when people think about sleep doctors, usually they're thinking either about obstructive sleep apnea or some form of sleep disordered breathing or they're thinking about insomnia. But there's lots of different aspects of sleep medicine including hypersomnias, the link between sleep and mental health, restless leg syndrome, periodic limb movement disorder, circadian rhythm disorders. There's actually over 80 different sleep disorders described in the ICSD-3, which is the International Classification of Sleep Disorders. In my practice, I'm really interested in integrative medicine and lifestyle approaches to sleep and mental health and really helping patients minimize their reliance on medications to achieve optimal sleep. Now, I'm really passionate about supporting other physicians and therapists and other clinicians with their sleep education because there are so few sleep doctors available for the millions of patients who are struggling with sleep. In a 2017 study, it was estimated that there's approximately 7,500 board certified sleep specialists in the U.S. For a population of 325 million people at that time, it's even more now, with a ratio of 43,000 patients to every one sleep specialist. So even if more people go into sleep fellowship, we're still not going to have enough sleep trained clinicians to support all of those patients. I think it's really important that you as the clinician have the knowledge and skills to support your patients with sleep. And there's so much more to sleep than prescribing sleep aids or referring them out for CBTI or doing CPAP or other types of therapies. Those are all helpful tools, but sleep is so much bigger than this. And Clinical sleep medicine is a skill that you can learn to better support your patients and then you can refer them out if they need more specialized support. But I just think it's so important that every clinician has a really good grounding in the foundations of clinical sleep medicine. Patients are also more savvy and interested in sleep these days. So even as I was talking about all these influencers online, now there's all these sleep coaches and things like this that didn't really exist when I was going through my sleep medicine fellowship training. If you're a practitioner who wants to learn more about clinical sleep medicine, medicine, especially through an integrative holistic lens, which there's even fewer of us integrative sleep medicine specialists out there. We have a small community and we're really passionate about supporting patients on this path to wellness because there are so many effective things that we can do to support patients with one of the foundations of optimal health, which is sleep. And you don't have to do a fellowship to do that. Actually, most of what I learned about integrative sleep medicine, I did not learn in my sleep medicine fellowship. You can learn a lot of it with mentorship and guidance. And so we really need more physicians and therapists who are educated in these methods. I also have a program, it's called the Clinical Sleep Kit, and we have a wonderful community of different practitioners, all from diverse backgrounds. We've got psychiatrists, physicians of different specialties, we've got sleep coaches, psychotherapists, all kinds of practitioners all supporting each other through learning integrative sleep medicine so we can band together and provide resources and education and support for our patients. If you ever see patients with sleep issues in your clinical practice, let me know in the comments below.